Hi guys, uh, welcome back to my channel. Yesterday was a glorious morning and a glorious afternoon here where I live on the Isle of Wight and uh, I decided to get over to a place called Newtown Creek. Now Newtown Creek is a, um, it's a creek and it's basically where lots of boats go, mooring up and stuff and uh, it's a country park as well so people go milling around, walking, have a picnic and stuff, walk their dogs. It's a really nice place to go when the weather's nice. I did go there a couple of weeks ago but the weather was really crap so I decided to um, give it a miss and come back. But uh, yesterday was perfect, so I got off down there with my Zeiss Icon Netta and I also took a roll of uh, Super Pan 200 film as well, this Roly film. I've never used this before, never developed any of this stuff before, well, apart from yesterday. But uh, that was my first time. And I went with a plan in mind as well. I didn't just want to go down there and sort of not know what to shoot and go, oh, that looks nice, this looks nice, that looks nice, and try, you know, I had in my mind what I wanted to take photographs of, and there was only three scenes that, um, that really did kind of appealed to me for well, for yesterday anyway. So that was the three scenes in mind that I went to shoot. Now I've got 12 shots on this roll of film. So what I didn't want to do was um, just go and take them three shots and then decide or, or try and figure out where to waste the roll after that. So what I decided to do was bracket my shots on each scene I took three photographs of the same scene, uh, metered my exposure and then went up one stop and down one stop just in case when I come back, when I developed, um, it just gives me a little bit more variety in in the, in the negatives, if you like, uh, for exposure. So that's what I did on each scene. So that was my nine photographs um, that I took. Then I had three left in the camera that I decided just to shoot um, as a bonus shoot, I suppose, bonus photograph at the end of it. But, um, but I come away and I was really happy. I come away with the three photographs that I want and I developed the film. And they've come out really nice. These are the negatives here. I'll show you these on the light box so you can see um, what I was up to. And uh, I did take my video camera along, so I'll stop rambling. I'll just let you see a little bit of the video um, that I was making yesterday and a little bit of Newtown Creek and what I was doing, what I was up to. And then we'll come back in the dark room and I'll show you um, how I made this print, if you can see that there. I hope I'll just check and make sure the light's not in it. Yeah. Oh, that's good enough. Um, so I came back with the print last night. I made this print and uh, I'll put it on Instagram if any of you guys saw it. But um, it's now framed and well, it's not on the wall yet. It's going to be on the wall at some point. But uh, it's only a 7 by 7 inch print and this is a, a 20 by 16 frame. So uh, it's kind of, I like framing like this sometimes. And uh, so yeah, this is going to go indoors on the wall. So um, I'll show you the video. We can come back and I'll show you how I made that print in the dark room. This morning, but staying dry with bright sunshine and heights of 30. And don't walk me through. You're not today, so I'm not. behind me that's uh, that's my first plan photograph unfortunately I bought my trainers out I didn't bring my my welly boots it's gonna be a bit muddy over there but um, that's my first photograph I, I did check the tide times and they said the tide was going to be in but at least we've got a little bit of water there to play with so uh, I'm gonna plot up over there somewhere and take my first series of shots well underfoot there that ain't too bad um, that's quite nice, so I'm going to plot up here, you can see where I'm trying to photograph. Got a little bit of reflection off of the wood, so uh, let's get the camera out and get a shot.
So I'm all set up and ready to go. I've got, um, I've already done some spot metering on the DSLR and I've set the Zeiss um, to infinite focus. I've got an F16 and a shutter speed of 200, which is its maximum shutter speed. So um, I'm gonna use the aperture for my bracketing. So I'm gonna go to F11, F16 and F22 on this scene. So I've just done my first three shots, but unfortunately the first shot I did, the uh, shutter got stuck. So you know, rather than gamble back when I get the negatives, um, I decided to, the second shot was my first shot, third and fourth. Um, so the first shot was F16, second shot was F11, the last shot on this scene was F22. And this is good for me to talk into this camera because when I'm writing it down, I'm also making a note video-wise myself uh, for future reference, so um, it's pretty handy. So right, let's now move on to scene number two. So I'm um, now at scene number two, which is only a walk from scene number one. Um, and this is a really nice scene, if you can see the reflections, you've got that boat shed there, reflections. You've also got those wooden posts um, giving off reflections as well. And a couple of clouds in the sky. Looks really nice, but yeah, you got it. There's people in the background. I don't mind. I don't mind a few people in my scene, but just a bit too many. So I'll just wait around, see what happens. There's a little tip that I do in situations like this, especially with this camera. I know the light seals are good, but behind me is the sun. And while I'm sitting here waiting for this shot, I've just put my cap over the camera because the sun's coming down on the camera. And if there is any light leaks, um, it'll, it'll soon start to seep into the film um, if I left this here for half hour or so, I don't know. But it's just a precaution, you know, step on the side of precaution and all that. So I'll just put my hat on there, just to stop any of that crap happening. I've bought out my, also bought out my Olympus OM20, and I was kindly sent a couple of rolls of this stuff from uh, John's 9001 on Instagram. I'll put a link to his Instagram account below, check him out. Um, but he sent me a couple of these rolls of Orwo. I've never heard of this stuff before. It's uh, NP22 panchromatic film I think it's a 125 speed um, yes yeah, 125 speed uh, and that's what I've dialed into this so I'm also going to get a few shots on this Orwo film um, not sure how I'm going to develop it yet I'll probably stick it in Rodnoll because I did some street um, was it street yesterday yeah I did a little bit of street photography yesterday with it so pull out a little bit of grain and a bit of grit as well hopefully um, it's thinning out over there now uh, yeah so um, at the end of the video, I'll show you a few shots on this film as well. I've got another roll of this. I might do a, a sort of mini review or something on this film at some point if I like it. So, uh, Johns, thanks very much uh, for sending me that, mate. I really do appreciate it. So, this is my third scene now, and I'm kind of like out a little bit more. Water. You can see the nice little shed over there. The water's really calm. Uh, it's such a lovely day, such a lovely afternoon here at the moment. Um, cyclists are still over there. I, mean, I took the first uh, three shots of that scene from over there, and uh, I don't think they're going to go, but you know, it's not going to bother me. They're just going to look small in the photograph anyway. But uh, yeah, so this is the next scene I'm going to take a photograph of. Well, that's it. That's, um, I've shot the whole roll now, 12 shots. I took the last two shots 
in this little scene here just uh of course it's really slippery and muddy there i should have brought my boots out but um i didn't envision myself going on that but uh I think next time I come to a place like this, I might put boots on instead of trainers. But um, yeah, so I've taken my photographs. I've got three scenes, and this was the bonus scene looking across there with the shed in the background. I've also burst off um, a few more frames of that Orwo film. So when I get back, I'm going to develop both films and uh, see what I've got. And these are my first shots. I took the first frame. That's the one I thought I nosed up, but it didn't actually. It worked out all right. Um, and that's the three bracketed shots that I did. They all look pretty identical. It was quite a bright day. Uh, that was the next scene that I grabbed. These three here, where I was waiting for the people to move out of the way, but they didn't. But uh, and that's this is the one we're going to work with. And there's the other couple there, and that one there as well. So there's the other three, and that's the bonus two shots that I took at the end. Just a shoe box, so I put me a bit of foam in there, and uh, I've got my lenses for. I should go the other way around, actually. Got my lenses there for my medium format and my condenser, and a lens there for 35 mil and a condenser. So that's 35 mil. This is medium format. As we've got medium format negs, we're going to be using the medium format um, lenses. That's the lens I use for my. Uh, Medium format, it's uh, Schneider. I can't even pronounce the next part. Kruznak, um, Compenar C. So it's a 75mm lens. And this is the condenser that I use for my uh, medium format on the Durst. So we get those bits out. Right, so my negative's in place, the condenser's in there, the uh, lens is on. And uh, I actually made my own template my, um, for the print, uh, which is 7x7 seven seven here. And uh, that's the insert there that I made the border with. See, I've marked out where it should go after I've made the print. I'll show you this in a second. So uh, first thing I need to do is just um, get the image onto the baseboard and then match this up. Right, so, so let's uh, turn the lights off. And I need to get it inside that. Just down a little bit more. That should do us. Get my template on there. And this is the area here I had trouble with because the sun was coming down this way. I mean, it was midday, uh, but the sun was coming down this way. So uh, this is the area that I needed to do a bit of attention on. But we'll do that in a second. We'll do a test strip. Let's just get focused in first. It's nice and sharp. And the good thing about printing 7x7 with a medium format camera um, I'm going to get nice sharp images as long as you're using, as long as you're sharp in focus when you took the shot. So uh, let's pull the aperture down to f8 and uh, going to do a test print now. So just do a test strip. This is my test strip machine. You guys have all seen this before. But those of you that haven't, um, I actually got this in a school that, um, that was uh, getting rid of all their darkroom stuff. And I think it's an old Patterson one, or Jessup's, one of the two. But uh, this is my test strip machine, so let's do a test strip. In goes my bit of paper. Close the lid. 
and it's right about the middle of the image so that's good enough and we'll start this side and work our way along I'm going to do five seconds five ten fifteen twenty if my audio is naff in this video guys, my radio mic blew up. I've had to order a new one, which I'm gutted about. It was a Sennhauser. I've had it for years, but it happens. Okay, that's done. Let's uh, develop this test strip. And this is all fresh developer as well, so everything will be working. Nice and strong. This is the test strip I've made and it's just been washed. We've got 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So I've got 5, 10. 15 looks nice, 20 looks a bit too dark in the sky and a bit dark here. I just want to keep some detail in this in this shed, which is really important for this uh, image. So I'm going to go for that strip there, which is 15 seconds. It's still wet, I can't write on it, but I know what it is. So now I know that I've got 15 seconds, I'm just going to dial 15 seconds into my timer and do another test strip right across the centre. Just kind of diagonal a little bit, like so. It's just kind of going to give me, uh, it's just kind of going to show me what it looks like across the whole strip on there at 15 seconds. From that, I can decide where I want to um, make adjustments to the print. And then it goes. And this is pretty much, I mean, I know I've already done a print already on this, but this is pretty much the uh, the workaround I did for that last print. Okay, let's stop and fix that and have a look. So, it's still wet, but... Uh, so this is my test strip at 15 seconds. The shed looks great and all around here it looks really nice. It's just starting to get a little bit dark over this side because I know the sun is coming from this area and of course this area is really blown out as well. Uh, so I'm now going to have to do another uh, test for this side of the image just to see where I want to try and keep these logs in if I can like they are here. Um, albeit they're going to be blown out because that sun was quite strong on that side. So um, let's do another test strip and work, look at this side. At the moment I'm happy with 15 seconds for the shed area but just need to look over this side see what it's doing. Okay so now what I'm going to do is double my exposure this side so instead of 15 seconds I'm just going to do a test over this side at 30 seconds and see how those uh, little wooden panels or little wooden logs uh, which is helping the bank stay together um, see how they look. So let's go 30 seconds and see how that comes out. You can see the paper's just covering it in the area there at the top. Okay, that's that done. Let's uh, stick this in the developer. And it goes. There's a pigeon on the dark room roof. <laughs> Okay, let's, uh, it's looking okay, let's stop and fix it and have a look. Okay, so this is now 30 seconds and I'm just starting to get some detail. Well, I've got detail now in this uh, logs area. If I go any darker, um, it's not going to look real because, you know, the sun was highlighting these uh, 
these light coloured logs and you can see the shed's gone really dark now, lost all the detail completely. So I know that this side of it is 15 seconds, whether this is 30 seconds, that I don't know. So uh, what I'm going to do now is just, I'm going to actually put a piece of 10 by 8 paper under the enlarger and uh, try and go for a print and see what happens from that. I can then decide where I need to um, alter anything. So let's do that now. slide my paper underneath looks about right and uh, I just need to weight down the template on a couple of weights just a big light seeping underneath it okay I'm gonna get ready with the tools uh, I'm going to be burning the sky in and the sea as well. Oops. So we'll see how that looks. I might do a little bit of. Uh, I need to a little bit of dodging on the boat on the boathouse maybe with this little tool here. Um, so okay, let's dial in our first 15 seconds where I know we are. So first 15 seconds, just a little tiny bit on the boathouse. To make that highlight slightly. Okay, let that burn in. I'll just waft it just in case any hairs have fallen on to the paper. That's that done. And then uh, for another 30 seconds, just concentrate on that opposite side of the print. And to do that, I'm going to use this circular dodge tool. I didn't use this in the in the print that you see framed, but I'm just trying something different. So uh, I'm going to hit this side for 30 seconds. But don't forget, I've already hit it with 15. So I just need another 15 seconds, which will give me my 30 seconds. So let's uh, give that a go. You can see I'm just dodging that side. And I'm just letting the paper burn from where the sun was. We'll see how that looks in a second. Okay, so pretty much this side has now had 30 seconds, this side has had 15 seconds. So uh, let's stick this in the paper and have a look. Stick it in the developer even. So this is a print that's just come out of the wash and it's not looking that bad at all. Um, I'm trying to figure out what this shadowy area is in the sky but, but it doesn't bother me anyway. I'm still going to continue and see what comes up. Uh, so yeah, not looking too bad. The still got a little bit more highlight over here. Uh, the shed looks nice um, but I'd also like to get a bit more highlight in this area here. So a little bit of dodging maybe here uh, during the first exposure along with the shed. I think I dodged that for a few seconds. I might just do this area here and then uh, start burning in. I think that's a reflect. That can't be the reflection there from the seagull, surely. It might be, I don't know. But um, anyway, it's looking quite smart. I just need to work on this area a little bit more. Just looks a bit, still a bit too light. Hold that down, so I'm gonna do exactly the same again, but this time just dodge that, uh, the sea or the water out of the lake area part. So 15 seconds, a little bit of boat dodging. And then a little tiny bit there on the water. That'll do it. And then we did uh, another 15 seconds over that side.
Okay, so this time I'm going to try and um, burn a bit longer that woodworking. So I'm just going to use a I'm going to put two pieces of card together and kind of creates this here so I can just start burning in that woody area. So let's uh, there you go. So hopefully I'm just uh, burning that wood area in. Just for another 30 seconds. There you go. And the last thing I'll do is, uh, as I always say, vignette the shit out of it at the top part and the bottom part. So I'm going to stick this on for 30 seconds. And just bounce this up and down. And I'm just darkening. everything around the image other than the boathouse and the little reflection I made in the water and this is how I want it to be it's not right it's not wrong it just is <laughs> okay last thing to do is just make my template in the middle this is going to be my last print as well guys I'm not going to sit here and try and make a masterpiece and uh, waste all my paper on a print that is not um, for any other reason than hobbyists and uh, a bit of fun and education as well. So I'll just put these clamps in place, these weights rather. Weight them down, just hit some white light on it and that'll give me my border. There goes the border. Take it off there and develop it. And there it is there, it's all washed, now it's ready to dry. Um, a little bit too heavy around the vignette and I think it's probably heavier on the camera. Um, I can still see detail in this area in the ripples. So, uh, But the idea of vignetting is to just lighten this area a bit more and put the uh, viewer's eye towards the part of the scene which is this area. You've got a little tiny seagull. So I just managed to get some more detail back in this area which is nice. Little tiny seagull, little bird going across the water. There's those bikers there and the people. Uh, they look quite small. Uh, it's okay, it just shows a bit of life in that area, I suppose. It doesn't matter either way whether they're there or whether they're not. In fact, I actually quite like it that they're there. Um, it just shows a bit of life going on. So overall, I really did enjoy the shoot over at Newtown Creek. It was a nice morning, it was a nice afternoon. I was there a few hours taking um, well, in photographs that you saw and I burst off a few of the photographs on that uh, Olympus OM20 as well. But uh, you know, most of all, I just sit there enjoying the, the sound of nature and stuff like that. I did come back and go in the dark room, which is where I made the frame, uh, the frame print that I showed you earlier. And I put this on Instagram uh, last night as well. This is one of my test, just make sure you can see that. This is just one of my test prints I was making and all these scribbles and stuff. It's just information that I understand um, to make another print. Um, not many people would probably understand it if they looked at it, but to me, um, it makes perfect sense because when I make a reprint, I can look at this and go, oh yeah, that's what I did. Um, I always end up scribbling on, on prints like this. And uh, these were the drops in and These were the uh, test prints that I did as well uh, yesterday. Christ, I'm dropping them all. These are the test prints that I did yesterday. Uh, pretty much the same workflow as I was doing earlier on in the dark room. Uh, there's some more there, but uh, they're, all the, they're all the test prints for that framed print that I've got. And from today's session, which I recorded on video, which you just saw, I've got, um, came out with these. This was the first one that I did. And then uh, I went off and burned a little bit in on the, um, what they call the wood, the wood things there, the wood logs. I did a bit of burning in on there, a little bit over the top on the vignetting, but um, 
Uh, that one's not too bad on a vignette, but that one's a little bit over, over the top, I think. You know, it's always there for the negative's always there for a reprint if I want to, but uh, I'm quite happy with that anyway. It's what I did in the darkroom, and uh, and that's the print I've got. I'm not going to throw them away, that's going to stay uh, in my box and uh, you know, for future reference. And those two bonus shots I had at the end of that um, uh, Roddy film, that's one of the I did one of the prints there, and that's one of them. One of the scenes there that's quite nice actually it wasn't the scene i was intending to go for but uh just just a little bonus print i suppose nice reflection did a little bit of dodging and burning on that one and then i played around with the orwo film as well in the dark room the negatives came out okay that's a contact print now of um of those 35 millimeter negatives from that orwo film and i developed that in rod dark one part uh, rod and alter 50 parts water and uh, cooked that for 12 minutes and I made a couple of prints this one here was my daughter was having a tattoo done at the time and I was sitting there waiting for her and uh, this is an old chopper bike next to a, a leather settee and that's just a street a street post there these are just test prints really to see what that film's like I'm quite impressed with it it's uh, I managed to get quite punchy results out of it and sticking it in that rod knoll there is a there's noticeable grain and uh, they look quite edgy so uh, I'll have to, I've got another roll of that so thanks very much uh, John for sending me that roll of film and two rolls of film I've got one left to play with and uh, I'll do something on that in the future and just in case you're wondering I'll put the Rolly film into Kodak D76 developer and I developed that one part to one part for 14 minutes uh, the negatives did look a little bit uh, overcooked um, or they could have just been a little bit overexposed, I'm not too sure, but either way, they came out okay, and I managed to get a good print out of it at the end of the day, which is uh, which you've seen is now framed and, and sitting on my wall over there. Anyway, guys, thanks very much for uh, watching the video. Thank you very much to the subscribers, likers, and the comments as well. I'll always read them and reply if I can. And also, thank you very much to the guys that support me on Patreon. I really do appreciate it. It does help me uh, continue what I'm doing and playing around in the darkroom and trying out new things. So uh, until the next video, I'll catch you next time. this video please hit the subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss the next one